I think this is one of the main things that draws people to get a PhD over a master's and lots of management, time, people, project management, because there is a deadline of when graduation is, which is not the case in a PhD, which in my opinion is one of the biggest drawbacks. Now here's a bonus tip to help you decide which one might be right for you. Are you confused about what a PhD is? How about a master's degree? What's the difference between the two? And what does grad school even mean? Today I hope to help clear up any confusion about what a PhD is, specifically in biology, and how that is different from a master's degree for anyone who's curious or for any students who want to know their options. Before we get into the video, please subscribe to the channel to see more videos on these topics and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I have a new post. And if you're interested in more bonus content I have coming in the future, check out the Kikimon mailing list linked below. Most people I come across don't really know what a PhD is. I mean, I didn't even really know until well into college. So I usually leave that part out when I tell people what I do. Otherwise, it goes something like this. Oh, you're in grad school? Yep, biology PhD student getting my doctorate. So you're gonna be a doctor. Nice, I can come to you to fix my back pain. Yeah, not exactly like that. One of the problems is that it's not really well known or explained to students that they can actually have a career as a scientist like they see in the movies, like Jurassic Park or Spider-Man. According to US Census data, only 1.2% of people in the US have a PhD, and 21% of adults have a master's. Also, diverse representation of scientists in the media and in real life, especially in leadership positions, is lacking. According to a 2019 education report by OECD, if we look globally, the percent of men with a doctorate is usually higher than that of women. This trend is also true across multiple fields of study, not just STEM. Even more so, the racial and ethnic groups that are receiving masters and PhDs have consistently been disproportionate with people of color receiving much fewer, which is due to many reasons, but hopefully by making this information more accessible, it can help at least a little. So say you are getting or have gotten a degree in biology or STEM, you aren't going the pre-med route. You think you might be interested in a research or industry and management related position, but you're not really sure what kind of schooling you might need. I was so lost when I was at this point. I didn't even know what a PhD was or what options I had that were not medical school. I attended a workshop to explain this exact topic and eventually led to where I am today. So I really hope to help change those numbers and provide all the information necessary for others who may want to take this path and keep expanding what a STEM scientist can look like. For one, the career options can differ. With a master's degree, you can't become a professor in most cases or get faculty positions. A master's can go into industry or business management in biotech type positions, but there are a lot of different roles within that and there's also government positions or at research institutions or in academia as a researcher, technician, but just not faculty. With a PhD, you can become a professor after doing a postdoc. And in industry, generally PhDs can go higher in the positions. For example, management positions, director or group leader, whereas a master's can be more limited in terms of how high you can usually go. There might be a ceiling in most cases. I think this is one of the main things that draws people to get a PhD over a master's in terms of what they wanna do in biotech and industry. I do wanna clarify, at least within most biology programs, you don't have to get a master's to get a PhD. Oftentimes you get both in the PhD process, but you don't have to do one then the other, but some people do. Also, there are many transferable skills with a PhD because you learn to drive a project on your own involving decision-making, communication, delegating, critical thinking and analysis, and lots of management, time, people, project management. Number two is a big difference in the length of the program. Master's programs are usually two years, maybe one to three years, but on average two. Whereas PhD programs are much longer. They range from four to eight years on average from programs that I know of about five to six. For mine, it's about six. 
So definitely much longer, more of a time commitment. Number three is a difference in goals. A master's program is usually heavy in the coursework and not so much research, and it may be more specialized. For a specific career, for example, a biotechnology management program or pharmacology focused research. Classes will be more geared to these. This is different than a PhD, which has minimal coursework usually. Mainly the point is to be trained as an independent scientist or researcher. And in the process to gain all the soft skills, like the ones I mentioned before, like critical thinking, communication, and that is needed for future careers as an independent researcher. The fourth difference is funding. Typically, master's students are not fully funded by their advisor or PI, whereas many STEM or at least biology PhD students are funded or have some promise of fully funding their time in the program, which sometimes has requirements for them to teach or apply for grants. The next point, which is related, is TAing. Master students tend to have more TA duties to help cover their costs because of the lack of guarantee of funding. This is not necessarily the case in PhDs. Not all PhD students have to TA. There's different requirements, usually depending on the department, the program, or the advisor. The sixth difference is rotations. In many PhD programs in biology, grad students do rotations in the first year. This is when you try out different labs to work in and then you decide on one to stay in for the rest of your time in the program. But usually students directly enter a lab with a master's program and there are exceptions to both cases, but rotations will definitely mostly be found for doctor programs. The seventh difference is the expectations of a master's student versus a PhD student. Because of the length of the PhD program, a larger research project is expected, obviously, and more independence is expected to be developed. In a way, there's more responsibility and higher expectations for a PhD. Also, you're more of an investment as the PI is paying a lot for you to be there and therefore, in a lot of cases, is investing more time and energy into you. A master's student may have a more defined, smaller, predetermined project or part of a project. This might mean less flexibility or exploration within a research project, but may mean a higher chance of publishing in a more timely manner because there is a deadline of when graduation is, which is not the case in a PhD, which in my opinion is one of the biggest drawbacks. Now here's a bonus tip to help you decide which one might be right for you. Ask yourself, do I love or hate research or where do I fall between the two? What about lab work? And I know this will depend on the setting, but these are not for everyone. PhDs are much more research intensive where you have to live with the ups and downs of doing novel research and failing all the time, but you still have to keep going. <laughs> Whereas masters, you don't spend as much time doing research in many cases, and it's much less focused on that aspect and can be more about the experience than developing the analytical, critical thinking skills needed for driving a new research project. Overall, both have pros and cons. It just depends what you want in terms of future goals and what will make you happy in life, whether that's long-term or short-term. A PhD is a longer, intensive, and difficult investment for more career opportunities. Masters has more structure, for example, a definite timeline and there is an end in sight <laughs> and is more career skill oriented, but can run into a ceiling of growth in industry positions, but you can still be very happy. Lacking role models or anyone around me who took this path made it hard and at times very discouraging to navigate. So please share this with anyone you think might find this helpful because I would have killed for this information earlier on in my undergraduate time. Please like this video and say hi in the comments. Let me know if this was helpful or interesting or if you learned anything new. If you have any other questions, don't forget to subscribe and check out my mailing list if you're interested and stay tuned for more. Bye. That was horrible. Oh, email subscribe. My email, what's it called? Email, my mailing.